CBS Sports Network presents the 2016 PWBA Tour. Today it's the Pepsi Lincoln Open Finals. The four remaining bowlers all competing for a tour title and prize money. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Bowling on CBS Sports Network. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside Kelly Kulich. You made a tour best six TV shows last year. And Kelly, three of our four finals today have won titles on tour this year. It's a loaded field. Yeah, you know, Liz came off winning the Las Vegas Open, Clara winning in Green Bay, the Ashwaubenon Bowling Center, and then we have Shannon O'Keefe who defeated me on the short pattern. So April's going to kick it off against Liz Johnson in the opening match. The winner will go on to face Clara Guerrero coming off of a hot win not too long ago, and then that winner will advance to face Shannon O'Keefe looking for, again, her second title of the season. Kelly, let's break down Clara's game a little more. She won her first ever career title. It was a major as well. It was. Clara's game is straightforward. She really likes to play close to the gutter, end over end roll within her comfort zone. She got out of her comfort zone in Ashwaubenon, but proved to be the winner in that match. Liz Johnson has a victory at the Las Vegas Open this year on tour, and the Hall of Famer is also the reigning player of the year. You know, Liz said in her Hall of Fame speech that she's not done. Anytime soon, she's not going away. She's going to be a fierce competitor to the day she dies. We can't wait. Great bowling excitement coming your way. When we come back, it is time to bowl on CBS Sports Network. The PWBA Tour will crown a champion. Who will it be? O'Keefe, Guerrero, Johnson, or Ellis? We'll find out. Almost time to bowl on CBS Sports Network. Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open Finals. Dave Bryan, Kelly Kulik with you. We check your future for the sport. Lane pattern. Dave, we got 36 feet. Two parts of the lane you're going to look at here and here. Reverse oil, forward oil on the short pattern. You're going to have the girls play closer to the gutter, creep into the pocket. And as they break down, they're going to go more left to right. Medium volume bowling on ice, which is for a high friction center. We're going to see a lot of high scores on this telecast. Our first match, the legend Liz Johnson. April Ellis making the first ever TV appearance out of Jackson, Tennessee. Liz from Cheek to Waga, New York, outside Buffalo, the Hall of Famer. 18 titles, um, mm. amazing. Still going strong. Looks for a good start. And has it all 10 down. Liz is no stranger to this atmosphere. Right around four at the arrows, controlling the break point down the lane. Ball needs to change direction once. That's towards the pocket, the 1-3. Great execution. April Ellis, age 33, zero titles, hails out of Jackson, Tennessee. Her first telecast as a professional lady athlete. Big moment. Told us pre-match she was pretty nervous. Ah! There's that first shot, crosses over. Seven pin count, maybe get some of the nerves out. The six, nine, 10. She will go the plastic ball. She's going to go straighter and greater at the spare. Again, 6 9 10 to spare. Does cover kindergarten teacher in Jackson, Tennessee. Let's look at April's physical game here. Starts with the left foot, so it's a five step approach. Moves it on the second, which is correct. Past the knee, short step, nice backswing, just to equal to the height of the head. And as she takes her slide, she slides forward, comes to a stop. She gets a little bit low when she releases it, so she hasn't quite finished her stance from top to bottom. And what I mean by that is you're looking for like a pitcher on the baseball mound, starting high and going low in one continuous motion. Oh. Crosses over and almost goes Brooklyn. A little smile Five. there. I think some nerves are just playing in. I said on the short pattern, you want to play closer to the channel. She's much deeper than Liz is. So she's right around board 10 at the arrows, 10 down by that 44, 47 feet distance, and the ball crosses over. Picture Dave as you would a cliff, and all of a sudden when you drop off that cliff, that's where the oil end stops. It's a good analogy. It's all about ball reaction. Yep. The pattern. There's a five pin, stays clean. Yeah, another great description is if your car tires are turning and they're going through an oil slick, as soon as they come out of that oil slick and they hit the AstroTurf, it's going to go sideways. That's exactly the reaction you're seeing right now. 
Liz is going to control it, though, on this right lane. More end over end roll, and you want the ball to come smoothly out of the pattern. One title this year for Liz already. Runner up, Players Championship, and the second major. How about that pass to the pocket? Crunching into the 1 3. And all 10 down. Good start. Liz Johnson. But we said Liz's game is, is her simplicity. First step, four step approach. Nice short backswing, not a lot of slide. She's got the knee brace on, creates great maximum leverage and a little bit loft out onto the lane. One of her keys was keeping her torso very tall, and by doing that, she can control the ball off her hand. Turkey to start for Liz. A perfect beginning for Liz Johnson, who lost to Clara Guerrero in the Players' Championship Finals, 199-175. So, so consistent. Hits the same spot on the lane as the last time on that lane. Ball deflects to the right. Might be losing a little bit of energy. She knows it. This is her A game. I've always said Liz is really strong on short. She's strong on every pattern. But this is the, the pattern that she really shines on. Tournament for April so far. Better shot, seven stands. Any player who converts the 7-10 split on our CBS Sports Network Finals will receive a $100,000 bonus courtesy of Ultimate Bowling Products. April on the shot, probably the same area of the lane, but more up the lane instead of missing left off her hand. She goes a little bit more left to right. Great shot, four pin falls, unfortunately, in front of seven. Way to bounce back. There's a seven pin for April from Royal American at University of Pikeville. And it's an NAIA school in Kentucky. She's in that school's Athletics Hall of Fame. And her team back in 04 won the ITC team championships over Wichita State, the longtime powerhouse. Mm -hmm. And she told us pre-match that's still a highlight of her career. She'd like to change that, create a new highlight maybe here today going for a championship. Won't be easy to climb this ladder. Again, crossing over. Just can't find that one three pocket. Coming in super high, six pin up. Yeah, she knew off her hand. And really, again, because the, the pattern is so flat and so sharp at the end of it, the closer you can be towards the gutter channel, be better. But it has to come smoothly off the end of the pattern. It has to be rolling forward. And watch as the ball wants almost like it's somebody kicked it to the left. She's in that 10 zone, but she's got to be more left to right if she's going to continue to play that deep. There's the six. There's her mark. Her career best finish on tour. 2015 Storm Sacramento Open. That was 10th. She competed as a non-member that year. Last season. Go to the finals for Liz. Position by round. Wow, 38th to third. That's quite a jump. Can't count her out anywhere. That's true. One reason she's so great. Yeah, absolutely. Never gives up. Tenacious battler. Avoids a split. That's the good news. Nine pin stands. Yeah, she's doing everything right. She's controlling the pocket. She's in her zone. Now she's right up in around four or five at the arrows. This one's slightly inside, going left off her hand automatically, so it's not up the lane as it is into the lane and to the left. Comes up high, could have been the four nine. She gets a little bit help. There's the nine. Get open frames against Guerrero in the championship match in Green Bay at the Players' Championship in the third and sixth frames. And she told us, Kelly, here today pre-match, just some bad decision making. I had only one match as the number one seed. And even Liz Johnson, the Hall of Famer, the legend, sometimes makes mistakes. Her, her biggest key physically, and she's told this to me and my mom and some other people, KYBD, and I mean this night, Liz, keep your butt down. Stay down within the shot, takes pressure off her knee, keeps her torso nice and tall, and she's able to power through each shot and create greater launch angles through the swing. Just like this. Look pretty good right off her hand, and all 10 down.
even as a seasoned veteran, we do make mistakes from time to time, and it's just being a human being. But it's how you rebound, how you come back and move forward. She's done it so many times in her Hall of Fame career. Road for April. Round one, she was 30th, moved up slowly. Got up to seventh, all the way up to fourth to qualify for the show. Defeated Sandra Gagor, 188, 176 in the step ladder to put her on her first ever telecast of this 2016 season. Can't find the pocket. She's smiling. I'm sure that's still some nerves being on her first telecast. Let's see off her hand. Again, she's hitting the same target at the arrow zone, but always left off her hand. And that's actually coming from her swing. Her swing bumps outside of her body a little bit, and most often enough, the misses are going to be inward. She knew it. As soon as she released that one, there's nine pin, there's her spare. And Liz Johnson has struck on four of her first five frames. That was a nice 23 pin lead at the midway point. Your first telecast, you're going up against probably one of the best bowlers of all time. Got to get the nerves out. Let's see if she can physically execute, make a better shot, give herself a little bit of breathing room to get more comfortable. That's not easy to do, is it? No. In one game. And Good she's luck a against Liz Johnson. She's a runner. Maybe she's just got to get her heart rate down a little bit more. Lane, yeah. little magic there and all 10 down. <laughs> She's run at least a mile a day, speaking of that, for 367 straight days. Recently took a fall when she was running, but just keeps on going, part of the daily routine, and hopes that will pay off against Liz Johnson. Midway point, conclusion coming up next. The Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the PWBA Tour. By Smithfield. Flavor hails from Smithfield. Get inspired at smithfield.com today. And by the USBC and BPAA are working together to build a future for the sport of bowling at all levels. Visit bowl.com or bpaa.com today to find out more. Lincoln, the state capital of Nebraska. Home the University of Nebraska Huskers in the Big Ten. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Midway point, first match, stepladder finals. Pepsi PWBA, Lincoln Open. And Liz Johnson, the three seed, trying to expand the lead to 33 pins. In the sixth. That looked great, right off her hand, and just drills through the one three pocket all 10 down. It's a great shot by Liz, can't even say enough about it. Sliding at about nine at the foul line, five, six, straighter. Go down here, curve in. Watch this beautiful path to the pocket. Hits the 1 3, ball goes straight back into the 8 9. X marks the spot. Five of six strikes now for Liz. She won't get a 300 here, but any player who does roll a 300 game on our CBS Sports Network finals will receive a $10,000 bonus from the PWBA. That comes in way light, but gets some help. Late hits and just a single pin, 10 standing. Yeah, she was getting comfortable, and speed again is one of her assets as well. This one up the lane, five, but definitely right down the lane outside of the normal zone it's been in. Seven pin trips from behind, let's see, hits a three pin. Five goes into the seven, seven comes off. Catches a, a nice lucky break to come forward. Career seasons, multiple wins for the Hall of Famer. She's done over a long period of time. Yeah, Liz has been on tour, I think, since she was the age of about 21. 96 U.S. Women's Open Ladies and Legends. Her resume just keeps growing and growing more and more each year. 2001 St. Clair Classic Foundation Games. and 2015, the Queens, Detroit Open, and the U.S. Open. She wins both majors in the same year. Knocked off Shannon O'Keefe. Dramatic final in New Jersey at the U.S. Open. Shannon hoping for a little revenge, perhaps, against Liz here. See. 
There's a saying, if Liz is in the building, she's on the show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> kind of automatic, isn't it? Pretty much. April's been struggling. She's found one pocket delivery so far. Best finish was 10th at the 2015 PWBA Storm Sacramento Open. As a non-member again now, first time as a professional. Her first telecast. Cut it to 22, works on a strike, seventh frame. Looking for some help across the deck, doesn't get it with a messenger for the 10 pin. What a really good opportunity to make things interesting. All right, 10 pin spare conversion. Goes to the hard plastic ball cross lane. There's 10. It was mom, sister, and niece here from Jackson, Tennessee. Made a long drive to support her in person. Stat pack key numbers. Liz, the first three. Non-strike frames for her in the fourth and seventh. Keep her first step nice and short and slow was a big key for her on the approach. Sometimes she gets too fast, she pulls down. Well, Brooklyn strike this time. And happening now in each lane where she's crossed over the head pin. Let's look at April's game. Her swing just gets a little bit outside her body, around her hips a little bit. If she had a little bit more spine tilt to the right, she would get the swing into the path a little bit straighter and cleaner, allow her hand to stay behind it a lot longer, and her trajectory would be more left to right. But that little bump outside most often enough causes that miss to be inside. Mom and sister right there. Behind rooting her on. Let's got a break on that ball. Out of the pocket again. Just a two-pin standing. Yeah, so solid on the first few frames. Caught a lucky break to leave the only single-pin spare the last frame. But now she's more up the lane, just a little bit outside of target. She's about 3-4, at about 40 feet down. She might have to make a, a ball change to something stronger in order to pick up in that mid lane. And being the seasoned veteran, you know our bodies don't recover quite as quickly as some of the younger athletes out here. I'll give her that little relief and break. Nice of you. I'm only three years younger, so I feel it myself. <laughs> and I've battled some ankle issues this year. We hope you're back on your feet and 100% soon. Yeah, I hope so too. Looking to make a few shows myself this year. But Absolutely. 31 pin lead for Liz going in the ninth frame. Looking to stay clean. Foundation frame. A little light hit, but just the two pin up. Yeah, it looks like the oil's starting to carry down a little bit. The ball isn't reading soon enough. So it's on target. Physically, it was a good execution shot. She's right in the same area as it was. The end of the pattern's roughly around there. But the ball doesn't pick up fast enough. So what I'm looking for, what I see, is she needs something stronger to pick up sooner. She'll go on to win this match, so I'm sure in the 10th frame she might try something different in her bag to give her a better reaction. Things looking good for Liz Johnson to climb the ladder and make the next match. Left again off her hand. Three this happened nine. so many times. Yep. All right, let's look back here. So here's her shoulder. Now see how the swing is starting to come out this way? Swing comes back a little bit. Hand turns under. Now it starts to tuck back underneath. And she's not able to project the ball more in front of her. Hand gets on the outside of the ball with the elbow. 
And that's most often the reason why she's missing slightly inward. Well, it's got to be incredibly frustrating. Yeah, chop there. Six stands. Open frame. Well, April's in great physical shape. She's going to be a contender with the, the remaining half of the season left on the tour. Making a lot of progress, learning a lot about the lanes. Billy Murphy's been big, very helpful to her. She just recently went to Storm after being on another staff with another company. So for her to make her first telecast, learning new equipment, she's done a fabulous job of, of learning the lanes and the ball motion itself. I'm sure she'll be a contender throughout the rest of the season. This match is over. Liz Johnson is on the bench, wrapped it up. And there is the 1-3 pocket for April Ellis. A little too late, though, unfortunately, because Liz Johnson has advanced. She'll take on Clara Guerrero of Columbia, major champion of 2016. That comes your way next. Liz Johnson, Hall of Famer, reigning player of the year. Wants to make some noise in 2016 as well, win her second title. Her next match is next. Liz Johnson, six strikes en route to win over April Ellis in our first match from the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open Finals. 225, 184. Moving up the ladder. Watch live early round coverage of all PWBA events, plus live and on demand coverage of all the best professional bowling action on Extra Frame. Visit www.extraframe.tv for more info or to subscribe today. Liz Johnson, Clara Guerrero, it is a rematch. In June in Green Bay, Kelly, you and I called it. Players Championship, final game. Yeah, Liz Johnson was the number one seed going into that match. A couple bad breaks. Clara was so consistent throughout all the matches, working way up the step ladder. She needed it just to mark in the 10th frame, winning her first professional ladies title. Opens for Liz in the third and sixth frame. Clara went the entire day climbing the ladder, three matches with no open frames. Came back from a washout in the second frame of that championship match, but a double and nine for 199 in the championship, and she had herself a major. The rematch unfolds here. Liz Johnson remembers well. Told us pre-match will try to use that loss as fuel for some revenge today. Indeed she will. Age 34 for Clara, 19 times on Team Columbia. One title to her credit. Pflugerville, Texas is where she hails from. Just outside Austin. Oh, All 10 down, good start. Shake or strike. She'll take it. Yep, now Clara's going to be a little bit inside of Liz. Her ball speed's a little bit slower. She's got a little bit more access rotation. So she's more left to right. Getting it all the way to board three. That's right about 44 feet down there. Ball will come off the spot a little bit harder. Just roll forward. Gets the light shaker. Fist pump is the sign that she likes. Former star at Wichita State. Collegiate Bowl of the Year. ITC team champ for the Shockers. First team All-American. leaves the four. Clara told us an interesting story, Kelly, pre-match, that her parents basically did everything they could to fund her staying in the United States after she graduated from Wichita State. Right around the time the PWBA ceased operations, they sold their cars, their family home, to give her English lessons and a place to live here in the States. And then the tour unfortunately went away. Clara to make some life changes. And here she is as the tour is back in year two with a major under a belt. It's an amazing story. Yeah, it really is heartwarming. The amazing the amount of sacrifices our parents and our siblings make for us to be out here. First thing she did when she won that Players' Championship major was to call home <laughs> and talk to her parents who had been watching on live TV in Colombia. They were pretty excited. All worth it, they said to her. Well, it was her first professional title, but Clara, She's won, I think, three gentlemen's regionals on the PBA regional tour. Made a tel national telecast. She's got the experience. 
Nice shot right to the nose there for Liz. 3-6 up on her second frame. I think her reaction is as great on the right lane as is on the left. She didn't make a ball change after that first match. Getting a little bit taller where she said staying down was key. When she steps up, when she brings her torso up higher, it forces the arm to miss inside. Yeah, she knew it off her hand, too. Covers with no problem. Liz, Kelly, and Clara. Only three to make TV finals in a PBA Tour event. When you look back to that 2010 TOC, what are your memories? Uh, being in the zone, what every great athlete aspires to do. It's just my mental keys were very good. I could throw the ball, do exactly what I wanted, didn't have to think. I just let my body take over. And uh, that's the biggest key for me. Turn the brain off. Liz talks about the 05 banquet open in Grand Rapids and still being a career highlight. Didn't win the tournament. As we see that last strike. How about for you? Is that your career highlight? It's one of my biggest highlights. Liz, great shot up the five board. Straighter is greater. Great directional change. Top of the pins. When the ball goes straight back off the pin deck, it's usually a good sign you have the right ball in your hand. Good ball motion. It is a highlight. I have to say my first U.S. Open title, that was two. Been a lot for you, Kelly. And more to come. Clara Guerrero trying to hustle back into that 1 3 pocket. Leaves double wood to 2 8. Clara's ball speed, and again, the way it comes off her hand creates a little bit different rotation. So she feels like she has to be inside of Liz, a little bit more left to right. And when you're doing that in a short pattern, you really have to control the break point being consistent over time. 36 feet is only a little bit longer than half the lane distance at 60 feet. And controlling the mid portion of that, that, that middle 20 is key. <laughs> Covers the double wood. Against Liz Johnson, you cannot make a mistake. Any point of the match in open frame can be a disaster. Here's that four-step approach, too. She went only weeks ago, even up in uh, Green Bay when she won up in Ashwaubenon on Bowling Center. But the 2-8 spare, you have to hook at it most often enough. It's one of the spares more easier to make if you do hook at it. But her road to the finals started off in the 14th in round one, worked her way at the ladder, fit the six, and she became the second high qualifier, just shy of, of beating out Shannon for that first position. Excellent shot by Clara. Close match. Only down by two. Again, more inside for 10-9 at the arrows. Gets it about five at about 40 feet. All 10 down. All that matters. So Liz has talked to us about her A game, B game, C game, and believe it or not, Liz Johnson has a D game. So after the shot, I want you to tell me what you think she grades out as. Let's find out here. Big shot. Fourth frame, looks for the double. That has it. So where is she in your mind? In my mind, Liz is in her A game. She's able to stay to the right. She's able to throw the ball hard, which she does very, very well. Most of the girls out here, she's always going to have higher ball speed. She stays down straighter, graders for her. Most of her titles have been outside of the second arrow zone. Kicks the ball to pick it up. And she strikes. I would say she's definitely in her A game. I didn't even know she had a D game. I didn't think so. I had to ask her twice. Are you sure? D? I said, yeah. But it's about surviving and grinding. You were not at your best. And that was one of her best shots of this match. 60 feet to success, crunching that 1 3 pocket all 10 back. Her footwork is key, staying low, keeping the torso nice and tall. Her left arm doesn't recoil a lot. Arm swing is through the path of its intended target. Beautiful, beautifully executed. Strikes four or five frames, has a turkey. Clara tries to respond. Fifth frame, looks for the double. 
We'll cut it to 12. No help. The messenger 10 stands. Let's look at Clara's game from the side. Now again, a few weeks ago, she went from five steps to four. The ball has to start moving on that first step or gets in the swing a little too late. Heel toe with that long third step, creating a lot of power. Beautifully execute how still her head is when the ball is at the height of the swing. And her follow through is so strong. There's a 10 pin. And she had talked to us about how winning those men's regional titles had really helped build confidence heading into the Players' Championship. Did she ever deliver on the big stage in Green Bay for her first ever major? Yeah, Clara's experience is, is world renowned. Columbia internationally, she's made a lot of telecasts. She's won a lot of men's titles in the regional area. She just couldn't find a way on the women's tour, but this year was definitely her season winning that major championship just a few weeks ago. No 9 inductee. Plenty of greatness still to come from Clara Guerrero. Two seed. A perfect shot into the one three pocket. And shrapnel in the pit. Clara head to head with Liz Johnson. Rematch of the Players' Championship title match. Great finish still to come. Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln. The entries hosting the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open. The Shadows, the University of Nebraska. The Memorial Stadium, Big Ten country now. And Kelly, some other finishers, including Stephanie Johnson. Yeah, Stephanie Johnson, winner last year on the ladies' tour on the shorter patterns. Rocio Restrepo, Diana Zavalova has been contender trying to knock down the door herself. Danielle McEwen made the telecast at the Queens. Tanya Rumpier, Carolyn Doran Ballard, just to name a few. Great to see John Lucido here, the fighter at Sun Valley Lanes. A fantastic host for this event. We appreciate all the help from John and his great staff. John was on the task force who was an advocate for the ladies tour coming back. So we owe him a great deal of, of thanks. We've got ourselves a match here. 22 pin lead. Liz Johnson looks for the four bagger. Sixth frame. Four strikes for Liz already in the match. to go up 32 pins. It's high, almost crossed over for a Brooklyn strike and a six pin stands. Long time after that commercial break. Having to get up, be loose again. One, two, three, four. Again, gets tall at the foul line. Elbow gets a little bit outside of the bowling ball, misses left of her target. And on a short pattern, you cannot miss left. Take care of the spare. Stays clean, but misses on an opportunity to expand the lead. Clara doesn't need a lot of room the way she's been bowling this season. Get right back in the match. She'll step up in the seventh, work on a strike. Yeah, and Liz right now definitely a contender to repeat as player of the year out here on tour for the 2016 season. Third telecast so far. Light hit, wash out, one, two, eight, ten. What happened? Well, there's a couple things. She's in the same zone, but now Clara's left of her. She's inside. She's getting to push the oil down the lane a little bit more. She's about the same break point, a little bit farther to the right. She's been over here a little bit more. But again, Clara is pushing a little bit oil down the lane, getting a hang spot. So in my opinion, it might be time to make a ball change, go something more aggressive, get a little bit left so she can be on top of Clara's lane play herself. An easy cover here. Ooh. Can't do it. The 10 stands an open frame. And is it an interesting in the Players' Championship final in Green Bay, her sixth frame was open. Here it's seventh. Later in the match, that could really spell trouble for Liz Johnson. Yeah, cross angle at the spare itself. You want to hit left of that head pin. She did everything correctly, just didn't get the bounce off the rail to pick up the 10 pin. Ouch. 
This is not very emotional. That's about as much as you'll see from her. Now the door is opening here for Guerrero. Can't you take advantage? You bet. That's how you respond. That's what a champion does. The double, sixth and seventh to cut into that lead. And again, so Clara's playing deeper inside than Liz is. She's sliding about 19, 10, 11 at the arrows, getting it to the same break point. So that oil, she's pushed a little bit further right for Liz, doesn't have quite as much hold. Or she has hold, but it's creating a little more skid for, for Liz to the right. Just a moment ago, Liz was on the verge of a 32-pin lead. Now Guerrero can take the lead. And the eighth frame looks for the turkey. Her husband, Josh, sitting behind her watching in the stands. It's got a push. It does help on the four. Wow. Boy, back to back momentum. to back jacks. Yep. This one's slightly inside a target. 11, 12, doesn't get as far right down the lane. You can see it's about eight, nine, about 44 feet, but she trips the four pin. <laughs> I think that fist is in the same position every single time she strikes and catches that break. Can Liz recover or issue two shell shocks? There's a strike. That's how you respond. Suddenly trailing. Yeah, little things as a physical coach looking for. Watching that first step if her body pops up. But that one definitely on target down the lane. She strikes. She needs to, to double up here in order to keep the pressure on Clara. Down by 14 pins going in the ninth frame. Every now and then on that first step, her body pops up a little bit. When she stays down a little bit lower, she's through the shot much more consistently. Just like that. Wow. That's a much better delivery to the 1-3 pocket and cuts it to a four-pin deficit foundation frame strike for Liz Johnson. Boy, I've watched Liz bowl many, many times, but Shannon O'Keefe is waiting in the side wings. We'll meet the winner of this match number two. Will it be Clara or Liz? Shannon has won one title already this year on tour. Guerrero looks for the four bagger. Span the lead. Doesn't hit the pocket though. Keep things interesting. Yeah, in this match, she's been more solid on the left lane than she has on the right. Seems like there's a little hang spot down the lane on the right, on this right lane. She's not as deep. 18, heel moves off, a little off balance, so she's not as deep. Nine at the arrows, whereas before she was a little bit further inside of that. Way, way right down here. Here's the end of the pattern right down here. So that extra five feet pushes the ball, loses energy, but she just leaves the two four spare. Which she does convert. She's asking for a re rack. How often do you use that? Um, been using it more in the last two seasons. Sometimes it's just a, a break to catch your breath and rethink things through. You might see a pin off spot. But Clara five for nine, Liz six for nine on strikes. Liz has one open, Clara is clean on her spare conversions. Max score, Clara at 226, Liz Johnson at 234. Things could be very interesting. Here in the 10th. Guerrero, four pin. She really has been clutch on this left lane too. Ten, eleven at the arrows. Not as quite as far right out. At about forty-four feet. Ball just picks up a little soon. High pocket hit, four pin. She'll go to that hard plastic spare ball. Straighter's greater towards the spare. See if she can stay clean. Oh. 
Has the four, has her mark. Well, Liz Johnson will have a chance to step up and win this. Yes, yeah, she will. She's going to have to strike on her first ball, depending on what Clara has on this field ball. If she gets nine or more, she forces. Liz will have to strike regardless. So we are building toward a dramatic finish. The count's important here, and nine. Regardless, Liz will have to strike on this first delivery. 214 for Clara. Great shot right here. You have that yellow pin on the ball. Sideways rolls forward. Six pin just wrapped around the 10, but great score. Again, forcing Liz. She needs the first one in the 10th here. One of the best bowlers of all time. The reigning player of the year, the Hall of Famer, has gotten to that point those accolades because of moments like this. Strike and six to win. Gotta have it. Liz Johnson doesn't get it. Two pin. The two pin stands. Well, she Clara went. Guerrero is going to win on the bench. Yep, she went high the last two times on that lane. Had to have that strike. And Liz Johnson, the three seed, could not convert. So Clara Guerrero will move on to the championship. Shannon O'Keefe awaits Clara. Great match coming your way next. Clara Guerrero gets to the championship match to take on Shannon O'Keefe. 214, 212 winner over Liz Johnson. Liz, part of the Smithfield moment of the match. Tenth frame, needed this strike. Plus six in the tenth to win it, but instead leaves the two pin and does not advance. In today's episode of the USBC Bowling Academy, Brian O'Keefe explains to Carolyn Doran Ballard the mystique of being behind a stronger ball. Coach, how we really see the lane and what bowling balls we use on certain patterns really has a lot to do with how we see the lane, isn't it? Yeah, that, that brings up a great point, Carolyn. And overall, we, do a, we deal with a lot of people coming in here for a lesson and coming in, into the pro shop for a new bowling ball. And they'll say, you know, Coach Brian, I want, a, I want a stronger ball. I want a stronger ball. And I really have to take a step back and really look at what do they mean by that. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between stronger bowling balls and weaker bowling balls and actually how they can read the lane front to back. So here we have Steven throwing ball number one, and you can see this ball takes a pretty direct line straight out almost to the gutter, and then makes a hard turn from right to left back to the pocket. This ball covered more boards from right to left, but yet it was saving all of its energy just for the last 15 or 20 feet or so. So technically, this would be a weaker type bowling ball. Here we have Steven throwing ball number two, and you can see this ball has more shape to it throughout the whole lane. It's actually using most, much of its energy much earlier, and therefore it's not saving as much energy, energy for the back end and hooking throughout the whole lane. That's what would technically make this a stronger bowling ball. Brian, it's amazing that, that people do react to the fact of when they see that ball and make that motion to the pocket, they think their ball is stronger, but wow, that mid lane and that earlier roll really do make a difference. Yeah, that's right, Carolyn. I can't reiterate it enough that the better players in this world all read the lane front to back. And unfortunately, a lot of the intermediate players and even advanced players, but not quite at that elite level, they see that ball make a big motion or a big change of direction from right to left or left to right, depending and they really equate that to overall ball strength. Where we want to equate overall ball strength is to how early it is, whether it's reading the lane on the front part of the lane or the middle part of the lane, or whether it's saving all that energy to the back part of the lane. That's another great tip. When you're out there practicing and you're with your coach, make sure to ask questions and also when you're going in to drill a new ball, make sure it's going to fit your arsenal. Great teaching points. Thank you to Carolyn and Brian. SBC Bowling Academy provides hundreds of hours of high quality instructional videos for bowlers 
of all skill levels. Learn from Team USA and USBC certified goal coaches, as well as other top pros and instructors. Visit USBCBowlingAcademy.com today for more information. Brian's wife, Jen Rookie, is ready to go against Clara Guerrero. Championship match is coming up next. Ready to go, championship match. Great start, Shannon O'Keefe. Finds that one three pocket and pounds back all 10 into the pit. Shannon, the number one seed, so she started the match. She's gonna be the one to finish the match on the right lane. Clara Guerrero now, her first shot. Final championship match, defeated Liz Johnson in the previous match. 2.14 to 2.12 to go for her second title possibility for this year. After beating Liz in the finals of the Players' Championship. Now it's O'Keefe standing in the way of a second title on tour this year. And Guerrero's off to a great start herself. Frame number two for Clara. Left lane seemed to be really clutch in the left lane the last match. Going more left to right, creating a little bit of hold to the left. Here we go, frame number two. For the two seed. Didn't have the ball reaction down late she was hoping for. And that's a tricky double wood with a two seven eight. Yeah, let's take a look at that shot. Four steps, got to get the ball in the swing soon, which she's been working on. Her tempo, 11 at the arrows. Break point right around here is 46 feet right over there at that cross intersection. But the ball lost energy too fast. So she might need to make a ball change or most likely for her just a subtle adjustment with her angles. But the 278, not an easy spare to shoot at. Can she cover? Not this time. And the entire Players' Championship without an open frame. Her first of the show here. It is early. Shannon O'Keefe sees the door just crack up a bit. O'Fallon, well, Illinois, just outside St. Louis. Two career titles and the head women's coach at McKendry University. Call her the Mama Bearcat and her players have Showing up today, right behind her, in support. Yeah. And they love shots like that. Beautiful shot for Shannon. So again, she also has a four-step approach, holds the ball in a strong position with her wrist and her hand, drops into the swing, more heeled toe. Long third step, which gives her the power step, and her torso is nice and tall here. And then as she slides, she's got such athleticism about her. Being a softball player in college, look how much leverage she creates with that knee going forward. Strong, aggressive follow through. All American outfielder at Portland State University. All 10 down, and she's talked about her beginnings in softball is helping her so much in bowling. Focus, athleticism. Ball drops nice and smooth into the swing. Her follow through hits her back. That's how aggressive it is. This is her wheelhouse where she can be very aggressive. Six pin, bounces off the sidewall to kick out the 10. How about you? Do you play other sports? Cross, you're from Jersey. Oh, I softball did. Softball hoops. Yeah, Go big basketball player, nice. softball, all state. Second team all state softball. Great athletes. Clara looking for help and the 10 doesn't get it. A little weak on that entry angle there.
even though we're bowling on a short pattern, which there's built-in friction because the pattern is so short, when you go left to right or inside to out, the ball still has to retain enough energy as it's going down the lane. And it changed direction so violently off the spot at the end of it that it still has to maintain some energy to go through the pins. Week 10, though, for Clara. Our season results, well, 33rd at the first major in Vegas. The Players' Championship in Green Bay at the end of June. Wow, spectacular for Clara. What a way to win her first ever PWBA Tour title. She'd call it the thrill of a lifetime. So much experience, 19 years, Team Columbia, international, accolades, plenty of wins. But she said nothing compared to winning that first ever to her title. She had dreamt of it her whole life. Now trying to win a second. That comes in way high though, and just a seven pin count. Three, six, ten up. Well, Shannon's a bit inside of her. She's gonna move further left, sliding 21 at the foul line. 12, 13 at the arrows, but this way, not this way on the shorter pattern. Ball picks up really, really soon. Outside where she's been over here at the break point. Further inside of her target, ball comes up high. She leaves the 3 6 10. Cross lane at the spare. You want the 3 to go into the 6 and the 10, and the ball to deflect to the right. Able to convert. Keep within distance of Shannon O'Keefe, the top seed. The road to the finals. First all the way through, not easy to do. No, very seldom will you see the ladies out on tour uh, lead it from, from beginning to end. And uh, Shannon, <laughs> first game out of the gate, she never looked behind. Dominant force on this pattern. Double one, two, eight. Shannon is very, very aggressive. She loves to be able just to throw the ball, not roll it, but actually throw it when she can accelerate at the bottom of her swing and kind of amp up her ball swing. With the shorter pattern, she has that built-in friction. But look, over the course of 24 games, she was in her comfort zone, averaging better than 219, and even through match play to give her that number one position. Covers double wood nicely. Tweets, but I think she was looking at one of her players that's here to support her and cheer on how crucial spares are in every given match. Leave yourself a makeable spare. She told me earlier that if she leaves a spare, she's like, I'm lucky. I know how to make this. So the two-way conversion is one that she's shot many times. She is the Mama Bearcat from McKendree near St. Louis. Players making the trip to support her. It's pretty cool. Bring it in. Make will spare. Great shot. She's so aggressive. Four step approach, drops a swing in. Hands directly underneath the shoulder. Great leverage with her left arm out, right around board eight. Good shot, she said. Good shot. Make will spare. There's a 10. She and husband Brian co-coaches the women's team at McKendry. The men's team won its first ever ITC Collegiate Championship in Wichita. Beat William Patterson of New Jersey in the Baker format. Won three straight games. Win the best out of five. That was exciting. Saw that on CBS Sports Network. Shannon was there in support of the men's team. Ball change. I was there too, it was uh, great to witness that, but now Claire on the right lane, she's changing balls right now. Gonna go to the Pearl Paradox. Fifth frame works on a spare, needs some strikes. In her. There's one. Trips the four. Let's take a look at that, she makes the ball change. Sliding in the same spot, so she's still in the same zone as she was with the previous deliveries. 
Here's 42 feet right here, same break point. Now the ball's gonna change direction to the pocket a little bit sharper off the spot. It means the ball retained energy, but it's rolling forward. Trips the four pin from behind, and that's due to her extensive training. She spent parts of January and parts of April down at the Kegel Training Center in Florida. She worked with some of the coaches there, her coach Ruben, on her physical game. That's why he suggested the four steps. It's been paying off so far. Changed the approach from five to four. And clearly, after already resulting in the major championship, things going well for Clara Guerrero since that switch. But got her hands full in a great match with Shannon O'Keefe. Going for a championship on CBS Sports Network. We'll crown a winner next. Set now to conclude this championship match. 22-pin lead for O'Keefe, sixth frame. Works on a spare. Every shot, a big shot now. Gets help, strike. Here's that four-step approach from Shannon. Again, look how strong her follow-through is when she can be very, very aggressive. Beautiful shot. She's got that fire in her. Now, Shannon, even though it is a shorter pattern, she said it's playing more like a medium. So the left to right is giving her more hold down the lane. So if she misses inward slightly, she feels the ball is going to push through and still give her that pocket to hit. Cross the deck, down goes number 10. Oh, the mess near had that one lined up. Hit it flush, 32 pin lead. Head pin off the sidewall. She she's knows how big a shot that was, Kelly. Yeah, she's got the same intensity she had for the Sonoma, Sonoma Open. She's always had the confidence knowing she could win. It was just getting that first one under her belt. Seven frame. Burrow, far from out of it. Can cut this to 22 with a strike, but does not get help on the 10. Looking for the turkey there. She made the ball change. Ball's migrating down the lane, changes direction, rolls forward, deflects a little bit towards the right. That's why the six pin just lays in front of the ten pin in the gutter. Shannon's ball is able to retain a little bit more energy with her rotation, giving more power through the pins. Staying clean. Makes the ten pin for that frame. Only has that one open but down by 33 pins in the match. That open came in the second. No pins in the match for O'Keefe so far. These are strike stats. Ten down. Now, Clara did not deal with a 7-10 there, but any player who does convert a 7-10 split on our CBS Sports Network finals will receive a $100,000 bonus, courtesy of Ultimate Bowling Products. Clara's delivery is great. Ball retains a little bit more energy on this left lane, a little bit more left to right, creates a little bit more skid. Strike is the result, but now Shannon in the eighth frame. Hurry up. It does. As the turkey, eight frame strike for a 43 pin lead, closing in on a title. Now it looks like she got the ball in the swing a little bit too late, but not too bad. 69th at the USBC Queens. From there on, she's progressing and moving forward. First place at the Sonoma County opening when her title for this 2016 season. Third place at the Players' Championship. And can she be the victor here at the Lincoln Open? Ball 
10 down. Foundation frame strike for Bagger. And the lead to 53. And the Kendry University Bearcat players here from the St. Louis area rooting on their coach. Pretty amazing to follow her around. Her own rooting section. Yeah, note to self, bring own cheering section next time. <laughs> He's got to become a college head coach first. <laughs> Night frame, Clara. All 10 down, cuts into the lead. Yep, her max score here is gonna be 224. Shannon at 267. Keith in the driver's seat. Guerrero starts off the 10. Comes in high though, could have been a baby split and just a three. Yep, Claire here looking for her second title, but it's not gonna be today. Shannon O'Keefe is going to be your champion. Numbers add up for Shannon. She has won the championship second time this year. First multi-titleist on tour this season and her name's right there for player of the year. Sonoma County Open, a second championship. Pepsi, PWBA, Lincoln Open Finals. Jen O'Keefe knows it. Second title of the season. Remember that screensaver she had after losing to Liz Johnson, the US Open? She's got a new one after winning the Sonoma County Open. Maybe another one now because she has a second championship all wrapped up. Congrats to Shannon O'Keefe, more coming up. Second tour win of the season, convincing victory for Shannon O'Keefe over Clara Guerrero, 252-203. John Lucido, proprietor of Sun Valley Lanes, ready for the trophy presentation to Shannon. Shannon, congratulations on your second professional title of the 2016 season. My question to you, how has coaching the ladies in McKendry really helped your game personally? Uh, what helps me is the fact that I'm constantly repeating myself to them, and so it just reiterates it to me. So I almost feel like I'm getting more out of coaching them than they are from me. So I'm getting more out of myself. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now your contention for player of the year for this season. Any message you want to send to the fans you have in the audience today and the fans back home? Well, I first want to say thank you to DVA. They believe in me so much and it's an honor to represent them and be part of their family. Um, thank you to Pepsi, Smithfield, Nationwide, GoBowling.com, USBC and BPA for everybody believing in us women and giving us a place to perform at our, at our best. Well, congratulations on your second title of this season. I'm sure we're going to see more of you with the remaining eight weeks to come. I hope so. I hope so. I also really quick just want to tell my girls how much I love them and um, thank, first and foremost, I guess, John Lacido and Sun Valley Lanes for even hosting the event. It's not possible unless our proprietors host our event, so thank you so much to him. Wonderful. Shannon O'Keefe, two-time winner this year on the 2016 PWBA Tour. She's a success story, player of the year. Options coming up. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Kelly, those girls, the Kenry Bowlers, one of whom is in the new screensaver on Shannon's phone along with husband Brian. Congratulations to Shannon O'Keefe, winner of the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open. She's going to join us next Tuesday, July 19th and 9th Eastern for the finals of the PWBA Greater Detroit Open. For Kelly Kulik and the entire CBS Sports Network crew, I'm Dave Ryan saying so long for the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open. In association with the United States Bowling Congress, it's